Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the MySQL intro. In this episode, I'm going to explain some of the syntax and terms that are associated with MySQL. If you want to know how to set up a database, you can watch the band management video, I believe it's probably the first one, uh, where I get the database set up, but this is assuming that you already have a set up database, and I'm going to explain some of the terms and show some of the syntax. So MySQL is database software. You can store uh, lots of data in different tables. You can think of it like a spreadsheet, Excel, or numbers. Uh, you have different columns, uh, and then each row has a value for each column. So if we think about maybe a list of people, the information is the name of the person and how old the person is. So there's the name column and the age column, and then each uh, person, each row is a different person. So I would be Pogo, my age could be 16, and uh, you would have a bunch of different values. This will make more sense once I start typing stuff in and it will print it out as a table and you know, you'll be able to see it. So first thing is we're gonna go ahead and use the MySQL um, uh, command line tool to access the database. This is how you can access it if you're on your Linux box, Linux server like I am right now. Uh, otherwise, you can access it through APIs like PHP as a built-in, which I use in band management. You can get a Java API, and pretty much any language has support for it. But this is like a command line tool so that you can access it. You can you know, type your commands directly in here, and then it'll do it. So first part of... PHP, sorry, the first part of MySQL is the database. A database is just a collection of tables. So let's take a look at the databases that I have. It's important to note that anything that you say uh, in PHP needs to end with a semicolon. If I say show databases, and I put a semicolon, it will show me a list of all of the databases. The information schema, performance schema, and MySQL databases are created by MySQL, so I'm not going to worry about them. Band management is a database that I created, but we're going to go ahead and create one for this. So we're going to say create database, and we're going to name it intro. I need my semicolon, of course. So again, it's create database, then the name of your database, and a semicolon. And MySQL is a lot like this. It's commands in the form of words. It reads a lot like plain English. Create database intro, that's valid English, and it makes perfect sense. You're creating a new database called intro. See, it says query OK, one row affected, 0, 0.00 seconds. It worked out fine with no problems. <clears throat> one row was affected, one database was created, and it didn't take much of any time at all. If I go ahead and say show databases again, it'll show me my databases, and now you'll see that intro is on that list. If we want to use the intro database, you just say use intro. So now we are using the intro database. Inside of the database, we can have a ton of different tables for different things. If I want to see all the tables that I have, I can say show tables. You can see that it's a lot like English. Show tables should show me a list of all my tables. It says empty set because we don't have any tables yet. So let's go ahead and create one. We'll go back to my person example because that is a very simple and easy one. We're going to create a table that uh, contains people. It'll have their name and their age, nice and simple. The command that you use is create table, and we're going to call this table people. Then in parentheses, you write all of the different rows. So again, create table, the name of the table, and then these are all of the uh, rows that we're going to have. In MySQL, you write the name of the row and then the type of the row. So if we think about it, let's think about our name. We're going to call that row name. That's how we would refer to it. We would say, what is your name? The type of the row would be text. It would be, you know, whatever the name of the person is, it would be text. Um, you could just write text and that would work, but we can also be more specific. If I write varchar, let's say 16, that means it's a collection of characters that is uh, no greater than 16. 
So the name Pogo would work, and it would be four characters, P-O-G-O, and that's less than 16. If I had supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, that would not work. It's more than 16 characters. <clears throat> so I can enforce this limit and basically say the name is going to be a collection of characters, a collection of numbers, letters, symbols, that is no more than 16 characters long. And that's good. So we have the name. Then we have age, and age is a number. And we can write int, which means integer, to represent that. We'll put our semicolon and hit enter. It says query OK, zero rows affected. It's just creating a table, so uh, you know it's not going to affect anything. If we see show tables, it'll show that we just created this people table. And you can use the describe command. You can say describe table, or describe people, and it will describe the people table. It'll show you, here are the fields we have. We have the name field, which is a collection of characters, no more than 16 in length. Uh, and then all the other stuff you really don't have to worry about right now. We then have age, which is an int 11, just an integer. There are, of course, restrictions on how large they can be. Um, so it's just basically a string and an integer, some text and a number. So now we have this table created, and we can fill it with information. First thing that we want to do is we can put some information in. You go ahead and say insert into, and then the name of the table, which is people. Then we're going to say values. So we're inserting into people the following values. Inside of here is where you put your values and you separate them with a comma. So first thing is going to be the name. And whenever you're dealing with something that's a string, you need to put it inside of quotes. So I'm going to go ahead and put pogo in there. And I'm putting it in quotes because I'm saying this is a string. So make sure that you treat it that way. Then a comma. <clears throat> Since age is a number, I don't need to worry about quotes. I can just write the number 16, close my parenthesis, and my semicolon. You'll see it says, OK, one row affected. So it added one row. I inserted again into the table people, which has name and age, the values pogo for the name and 16 for the age. Pogo is a collection of characters. I can tell because it's in single quotes. And age is a number because it's a number outside of quotes. If I want to see the information inside of a table, I use the select command. Now, with select, we'll just go ahead and do the most simple version. Select the asterisk, which means everything, from people. And you'll see it says the name Pogo and age 16. So that's everything that's in the database. Name Pogo, age 16. Let's go ahead and add one more uh, value. We'll just say um, Steve is uh, 24. If I do select everything, you'll see it has Pogo 16 and Steve 24. So those are the two values that are in there. We can be more specific in our query, because the whole point of a database is to be able to get and uh, manage the exact data that you need. So let's say that we don't care about the age. We only care about the name. Uh, we could just say select name from people. So it'll completely ignore the age, and it'll only give us information about the name. But it will give us all of the information about the name or all of the uh, rows for that name. Likewise, I could <coughs> select age from people, and it just tells me the ages 16 and 24. So if you only care about one particular row, or one particular column in that table, you can be more specific. You can also filter your selection. So let's just go back to our default, and we can see what we have. Let's say that we only want to select people um, who's under the age of 18. So we could say select everything from people where the age is less than 18. And now we have only me. You use the where clause to specify a filter. These are filters. So we're saying age, the column age, is less than 18. So it'll go for me and it'll say 16 is the age. Is 16 less than 18? Yes, so that's fine. But when it gets to Steve, it says 24 is not less than 18, so it ignores Steve and it only gives me me. I could, of course, say greater than 18, and it would return Steve, not me, 
or I could say equal, and it would not give me anything because neither of our ages are 18. There's no one in the database with 18. I could, of course, also uh, select more advanced one. Let's say that I want to select the age from the people, the, the table of people. I only care about the age, but I only want it where the name is equal to Pogo. And I need to put that in my single quotes with my semicolon, and you'll see it says age 16. So that was two filters. We, first of all, ignored the name. We only care about the age, so it's only going to show us information about the age. And it only shows us information where the name part is Pogo. Now, when you have a table with two entries, it's not going to be terribly helpful, but um, we still... Uh, you know, if you have a lot of entries and you want to filter them, then that's where it would be helpful. For example, a login system. You could have a username and password. Um, you could filter it down to the username and uh, the password with whatever they typed in and see if, they are, if there are any entries. Or, keeping with the example of people, perhaps you are allowing people to sign up to bring food to a picnic and you have another column that says did they sign up and it's either true or false you could then say I want to select the names of the people where who did not sign up to bring food and then it would only show me the names and it would only show me for people who didn't sign up so I could easily have a list of all the people who still have not signed up for food and then I could you know tell them to sign up for food so that's why that would be useful. So we went over inserting into a table and selecting information from a table. How about removing information from a table? Let me make sure that I write the correct word. I believe it's going to be delete. Or no, I'm sorry, it's remove. It is. Okay. So it's going to be remove from then the table. So we're removing from people. If I just ran that right now, I would take everything out and there would be nothing there. But let's put a filter on it. We can say remove from people where age is less than 18. So we want to remove every, we want to move all the rows from the people table if the age is less than 18. And maybe it's not remove. Let's try uh, delete. Yep, yeah, it is delete. Okay. So you'll see it says one row affected, which means one row was removed. And let's just go ahead and do our select all from people. And you'll see that only Steve remains. Remember, I removed everyone whose age is less than 18, which means that I was removed because I am less than 18 years old. So only Steve remains. So that's all for the basics. Again, these are the basics. Creating databases, creating tables, inserting values into tables, uh, querying tables to get specific information, filtering the information that you get so you only get certain pieces of information, and then removing entries from the table. So those are the basics. There are, of course, more advanced things that you can do with MySQL, but that's a very strong foundation of all the different commands and the different syntax and how that all works. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I'll see you guys soon with some more uh, coding. Bye for now.